Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is time for another true crime video yet again. And today we will be talking about Issei Sagawa, the killer cannibal who walked free. Issei Sagawa was born prematurely on April 26, 1949 in Kobe, Japan. As a baby, he developed enteritis, which affected his small intestines, but eventually got better. Now, he came from a very wealthy family as his father, Akira, was a successful businessman and was the president of Kurita Water Industries. Growing up, Issei was very introverted and shy and did not have a lot of friends. He was also very insecure and even referred to himself as weak, ugly, and small, standing at only 4 feet and 9 inches tall. But despite having insecurities about his looks, Issei was extremely smart and had a strong interest in literature, which is why after graduating from Wako University, he immediately enrolled for a master's degree in English literature. However, Issei had a very dark side to him that no one knew about. When he was in the first grade, he experienced his first cannibalistic desires when he saw a man wearing shorts. According to him, he wanted to take a bite of the man's thighs, curious as to what it would taste like. However, he never acted on these desires. Until one night when he was 24 years old. He spotted a German woman walking and decided to follow her home. Issei then broke into this woman's house with the intention of slicing part of her buttocks off and eating it. However, the woman woke up and overpowered Issei. I mean, he was a very tiny man, so this was not a difficult task to do. She reported him to the cops and he was arrested for attempted rape. And Issei, of course, never told the authorities his real intentions. And since he had a very wealthy father, Issei Sagawa got away with this. The charges against him were all dropped when his father paid an undisclosed amount to the victim as settlement. At the age of 27, Issei Sagawa ventured off to Paris, France to pursue a PhD in literature. And during his stay there, he admitted that almost every night he would take a sex worker with him back to his apartment in an attempt to shoot them and then eat them. However, he could never bring himself to pull the trigger and would get queasy just at the thought of taking someone else's life. And he continually did this for five years and was never successful with his plans until June 11th, 1981, when he invited a classmate over to his apartment for dinner. This classmate was a 25-year-old Dutch woman named Renee Hartveld. She was beautiful, smart, friendly, and stood 5'10 tall. Now, this was not a date, this was not romantic, but was instead a friendly dinner wherein they could share their works of literature with each other, or so Renee thought. Now, once she arrived in Issei's flat before they could even have dinner, she started to read a poem that she wrote. Her back was facing Issei and Renee had no idea what was coming. Issei then grabbed a rifle and shot Renee on the neck killing her instantly. Issei, who was a first-time murderer, fainted after he pulled the trigger but gained back consciousness just a few minutes later, realizing that there was no turning back this time, and he had to go through with his plan. So he did. After gaining back his momentum, Issei violated Renee's corpse before eating parts of her. He cannibalized her face, her neck, her chest, her gentles, thighs, and butt, and feet. Some parts of her he cooked, while some he ate raw, and the leftovers that could fit in the fridge he stored there. Issei also says that Renee was actually on her period during the time, 
and that the taste of menstrual blood bothered him. Um, I mean, excuse me, but you murdered a woman who showed you nothing but kindness. You violated her corpse, ate her mains, and the thing that bothers you is the taste of menstrual blood? Now, four days into committing the crime, the remainder of Renee's body was starting to decompose. And scared that the smell might alarm one of his neighbors, Issei took her body parts, stuffed them into two suitcases which he planned on discarding in a nearby lake. However, at four foot nine, Issei struggled with these suitcases and he eventually caught the attention of the police. He was caught in the act and was brought into custody right away. And since he was a foreigner and had no family in Paris, he was given permission to call his parents who were back in Japan. And again, his wealthy father came to his rescue, hiring a defense lawyer for him. Now, after spending two years in custody while awaiting trial, Issei Sagawa was found legally insane and unfit to stand trial. He was then sentenced to an indefinite time in a mental facility in France. Now, this case really blew up and Issei became somewhat of a celebrity and this really bothered the French authorities. So they decided to deport him back to Japan, where he was eventually admitted to the Matsuzawa Hospital in Tokyo. Now, psychologists found him completely sane and found sexual perversion as his sole motivation for murder. So this meant that Issei could stand trial after all and Rene could actually get some justice. However, the charges against him in France were completely dropped. The court documents were also sealed and were never forwarded to Japanese authorities, which meant that he could not be legally detained in Japan. On August 12, 1986, Issei Sagawa checked himself out of the hospital and from then on walked as a free man. This caused a lot of controversy in Japan, especially in Tokyo where he lived. Now there was a public outcry and people feared that this man was walking amongst them. Everyone was scared that he might re-offend, however, he never actually did. From 1986 to 1997, Issei became somewhat of a celebrity again, but this time in his home country. He would often be invited to be a guest speaker at events or shows, and even wrote a few books regarding the crime he committed and the Kobe Children Massacre. He also wrote restaurant reviews and a few articles for a magazine. However, during the late 90s, people actually started to lose interest in him, and he can no longer find publishers that were willing to work with him. At one point, he even almost got accepted to teach at a French language academy because the manager was so impressed with his courage in using his real name and not hiding his identity. However, the employees of this academy protested against hiring him. Therefore, this resulted to Issei getting rejected. According to Issei, being forced to make a living as a known murderer and cannibal was terrible punishment. But again, his father was there to support him financially until both of his parents died in 2005. Issei did not get anything out of their deaths and was even prohibited from attending their funerals. After this, he moved to public housing and even received benefits from the Japanese government for a while. In 2013, he was hospitalized and permanently damaged his nervous system. He lived alone and would often be visited by his brother who helped him with daily tasks. In November 24, 2022, just a few months ago, Issei Sagawa passed away at the age of 73 in a Tokyo hospital from complications due to pneumonia. He walked free for 36 years before his death. Now, this is a completely crazy case. Um, I honestly don't know what to feel about this. I mean, yes, he never re-offended. Really However, um, at a time, he actually got monetary gain for his crime and he never actually served time. Um, he only served 
two months while he was awaiting trial and then a few months in a psychiatric facility. That's pretty much it. I mean, Renee never really got the justice that she deserved. However, after this, um, Issei did not really live a full and happy life. So I guess he was somehow punished. But as usual, I would love to hear your thoughts on this case. And should there be any other case that you would like for me to cover, please let me know by leaving a comment. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys on my next video.